Testing, testing, testing. Okay, that should be as good to go. So, what are we doing today? We're doing a few things today. Um, we are in a bit of a heavy situation at the moment. Um, basically, I... Um, obviously, we've still got system writing. Uh, I've kind of taken a break from class writing uh, to sort out the bells. Uh, I guess we could discuss that briefly. Okay, we'll, we'll discuss that briefly um, just to set things up. So, um, briefly describe what's happening at the moment. Um, Obviously, we've got D23, I've not done a bit of writing for a while, so I'm a couple of weeks behind. Um, we might do that in this stream, we might not. Uh, we might do that on another one. We have put a pause on writing Bard. A really good bit of progress, I just... I don't really want to be looking at it right now. I've got other things I need to focus on. Um, what we've mainly done is additions to the core rules. So we now have... You have resistance, which is half damage. You have vulnerability, which is double damage. You have immunity, which is no damage. Now you have uh, reduction and magnification. And how reduction works is it's reduction X, and if you would take damage of that damage type, you reduce the damage dealt by X. With magnification, it's the opposite. So if you have magnification fire 2, if you take fire damage, you'll take an extra 2. Uh, what it means is we now have a sliding scale. We have set number, half nothing and then set number double um sorry about this um we have done conditions a long list of conditions Let me just here we go uh, blinded's the same. Bloodied is basically just a decoration. The fact you're fifty percent hit point, you get the bloodied condition. Burnt is damage over the time it's set to fire, but we did some things with some spells to make it interesting. Uh, a number of these have an actual set duration and the ability to take a trait test to end it early. So, Rather than having countless abilities like, you have this for a minute, but you can make a save at the end of every turn. It's just that that's the standard. Uh, the thing will specify if the duration is longer or shorter than a minute. And will specify if anything else happens. Um, if you get the trade test or not. Um, damage down. Uh, applies reduction to you, damage drain, reduces the damage you deal, damage up, applies damage magnification on you, dazed, uh, so what a number of these conditions have is degrees, and when they get to the fifth degree, they are turned into a harder condition. So dazed becomes stunned, slowed becomes petrified, uh, poisoned and burnt have degrees but don't turn into anything, frightened turns into terror, Uh, delay allows you to basically have a period of time where you can destroy the delay condition to stop a worse condition being directly applied to you. Uh, did it.
just to be very sure. Uh, the main thing for delay is it lets me, for example, go in three turns, you'll be stunned. You know you've got delay stunned three. You know, in three turns, you will be stunned. Um, this gives you a period of time to remove it before you get that condition. Desperation is for being a 25% hit point. Doom applies a uh, degree to the wounded condition, which is what will kill you. Drained is basically your HP and HP maximum reduction. By putting these as conditions, it just makes it easier to go. Here is a monster effect. It uses this keyword. Done. Uh, exhaustion has 10 degrees for a bunch of stuff. Grappled. Flanked is an optional rule, so it is an optional condition. Um, forced move is for when you have an ability that forces you to move in a set direction. Frightened turns into terror. Uh, we have marked, which is important because this will play with um, character features that let you mark someone. The important thing is you can only mark one target at a time. A target can be marked by multiple people at a time. Uh, paralyzed remains exactly the same. We that's with uh, paralyzed. Petrified is the same. <laughs> Sap is for reducing a character trait by X. Slow turns into petrified. You have stunned, surprised, terror, vulnerabilities. Basically, you get vulnerability to something. Oh, uh, no, sorry. The vulnerability condition is you get vulnerability to all damage. Um, then you have wounded, which is what kills you when you're dying. So we've added a number of conditions, but that's mainly to then make other rules quicker to pass. Because um, while it's a lot of things to remember, if effectively all you're going to someone is, you've got sap, physique, two, everybody knows what that is instead of going ah it's this monster's special ability that does this this is it basically ends up being the same thing um armor we've done since last time largely i th think we showed armor off last time um the main thing is have we actually changed anything i don't think we have because I think we came up with the armor abilities. Weapons largely have remained unchanged. Uh, yes. So. The main changes we've done is doing spells. Um, obviously you have the SRD spells and then you have other spells. This is what we're currently working on. I need to currently come up with two more um, kind of psychic manipulation cantrips. And I need to come up with two more illusion cantrips. I have an idea for one of the psychic manipulation cantrips, which is why I just added the um, forced movement uh condition what do we call it is it forced move yeah forced move because what i can then do is have a cantrip that just uses forced move um um yes so we have this we have our d23 which is currently in April. And the third thing we've been doing is I, as part of a promise auction, will be running a variation of Strixhaven. 
the variation of Strixhaven being that it is set in the Final Fantasy XIV setting, which is why I am kind of putting the accelerator on getting this system to look somewhat presentable. Um, and it's why we've kind of pulled back on doing the class design, because with the classes, I can very much go, OK, what FF14 class do you want to play? OK, which class would be best? to reflect what you're wanting cool great okay now we've done that we can proceed um yeah it's interesting um trying to uh make all this work very quickly um, I have a wonderful idea for material, actually, I'll quickly go into that. So one thing I want to do is we really need to, I do not have the brain for it at the moment. It's been a very long week of work. Um, I need to make a crafting system. And one of the things for the crafting system I've wanted to do since we've separated armour into chest, hands, legs, feet and head is each bit will have gem slots and these gem slots will allow you to do different things um, an important bit with the gem slots is they will vary in size category as they are more powerful and obviously you have less slots for more powerful things um, and the material used to make it, etc., etc., mean you have more gem slots. That that bit isn't important. What's important is uh, if we're comparing this to FF14, gem slots work as material. So my one thought was, am I? I'm only in the first year of playing in a Strixhaven campaign, so I've I, I don't have the first year to actually be able to read to kind of study how the book has done it, but I want it, it seems to be running very much off milestone xp rather than xp uh leveling so i thought a way you could bring back xp into things is what you could do is go you will gain xp for your character level as per normal if you gain a sufficient amount of xp to level up you do not level up you remain the exact same level. Don't level up. Same level. What you get to do is much like how you do in FF14. You get to roll on a materia table to automatically generate uh, some materia. And obviously the higher the character level, the more XP you need to complete the process. But the more powerful the materia that you can then recover to then use on your characters. So that's my plan with materia. Um, obviously we've got armour and that's being handled. Weapons have been handled. Uh, give me just a second. Warrior has the battle axe we have a battle axe dark knight has a great sword paladin has sword and shield gunbreaker does have the gun blade which we don't have Gunblade is going to be complicated, but yep, yeah, that's the thing I need to note down. I need to work on is what the frick is a stat for a gunblade? Um, Marshall is. Ninja is two daggers. Ninja is two daggers. 
Dragoon is a polearm. Samurai is a katana. Which can act as a great sword if great sword is slashing, which it is. Then you have Monk, which is Fists. Then you have Healer, you have Astrologian with the Astrolo. You have Scholar with Book. You have a Sage with the Noctiliths. And you have white mage with stick the only one i'd have to consider is noctiliths but that will probably um noctiliths will probably be a Inventor subclass. Yeah, Sage would probably be an Inventor subclass geared around healing. Uh, range DPS physical. We have the bow, which we did make the liar bow, so that works. Dancer has the disc blades. Machinist has a fucking gun. Which we have. Yes, we have. We then have. So, you then have the magical DPS, where you have red mage, which is basically rapier. You have blue mage, which is basically a rod. You have Black Mage, which is a staff. You have... Red. Blue. Black. Summoner is a book. Yes, so I think all... The only things I have to care about is the Noctilith. Which requires inventor, which requires that I complete the crafting system annoyingly. And then it's gun blade, which requires a gun breaker, which requires me to work out what the hell is the class that becomes a gun breaker. Because I have zero clue. Like warrior, it could probably end up being no, it couldn't be battle channeler because while channeling the emotion of courage would be very appropriate, um, it would not work. Because Gunbreaker's thing is kind of the special ammunition shot. At which point it would actually be either a tank build for the inventor. Which is a choice. A big choice. I'm not sure I approve of that choice of action, but it would be a choice that they could certainly go for. Or you could have an artificer be a fighter, and when we have the special combat maneuvers, we make an entire uh, combat maneuver section for the gun. 
which is also entirely possible. That could work. That could very much work. Um, but yes, I should probably go through what spells we've done. So we have psionic powers and we have spells. Uh, psionic powers... Largely we've only been messing with cantrips at the moment because my rule has been I want three cantrips for every spell school, which is why I need three mind-affecting cantrips and three illusions, and I only have one illusion and one mind-affecting cantrip. Um, yes, so technically I have two mind-affecting cantrips because Blind Spot is a mind-affecting cantrip, but it is a Scion-only cantrip, and I would rather have three in the spells. Um, if any of them can filter down to Psionics, that's amazing. If they can't filter down to Psionics, though, they can stay up here. Um, my current thought is I want to do one that's about 4th March. I don't know what the third one should be. And then I have no idea about the two illusions. Um, I had one idea for illusion, but then it turned out prestidigitation already does the thing, at which point it would be incredibly pointless for me to uh, create an entire ability that's about uh, Thieves Cant. So what's the what's what's the exact wording on prestidigitation? Prest digitation. I cannot speak today. This is about the third time I've tried pronouncing a very simple word and gotten completely tongue tied. Prestidigitation. Uh, here we go. Prestidigitation. So. Here we go. So. You could make a colour, a small mark, or a symbol appear on an object or surface for an hour. It doesn't specify a size of the symbol. <laughs> so my current thought my current thought is to have maybe one of the illusion cantrips be like graffiti like arcane graffiti because press the digitation you can cast this spell multiple times you can have up to three non-instantaneous effects active at a time yeah, so what we could do is have kind of like arcane, illusionary graffiti. I just know that down as an idea for my spells. Um, illusion graffiti. And then we need a third cantrip. Uh... What's the wording of minor illusion? Minor illusion. You create a sound, an image, an effect, an object within a six meter range that lasts not for a very long time. The illusion also ends if you dismiss it or cast the spell again. You can create a sound.
So my current thought, um, hear me out, is for the illusion ones. Illusionary graffiti, because the cool thing you can do with illusionary graffiti, you can do multiple, is if we remove or alter the limitation on how many you can have. Um... We either change how many you have, or we change the space that can be affected. Uh, my main thought is it would be a useful one for both. People who are part of the Thieves Guild want a Thieves Catch, you know, you just put an illusionary symbol up. Um, nothing too special, nothing too crazy. Um, or what you can do... If you're more, like, rebellious, you could just do some big graffiti art. Using illusion magic. And then the other thing you can do is illusionary fireworks. No explosion, no noise, it's just the visuals of a firework. But the big thing is uh, letting it be like a symbol. Um, don't do any damage, it's just the appearance of a firework explosion. And just letting that happen, because that could have some cool uh, user interaction. It's not being used for combat, it's an instantaneous effect. It's like, it's a firework, there's an explosion, a symbol appears in the sky, and then it vanishes. I could see some interesting uses for that feature. Not very useful for when you're doing your dungeon crawl but potentially very useful for certain things. Also potentially just good for fun. Um, so then there's one more dictation. There's one more mental effect that we need. Because once that is done, we have meet, we have met the requirement of three of every spell school being a cantra. At least three of every spell school being a cantra. Hmm. One more dictation. One more mind effect. The problem is we can't do anything too mind controlling because otherwise it it's too good for a cantrip. We're already going to do one that makes you move in a randomish direction, so we don't want to do that twice. <laughs> I can't remember what the current one we got is. Um, what's the current uh, mind effect? Vicious Mockery. Vicious Mockery is the current one. Um, so we could do another combat cantrip. Um, the random move one's going to do damage, so then in reality you've got two combat cantrips. You probably don't want three combat cantrips for the same spell school. 
unless you evocation because the problem then becomes that you've got too many combat cantrips for that school so what else could we do that affects the mind but is a cantrip Got but random movement, what else? You have command making friends. Uh, I don't know if you do anything down that route. Because to make it a cantrip you have to hamstring it too much. Sorry, all. I'm just trying to consider. Ah. Looks like I'm going to have to learn how to use Foundry because. Uh, I needed to work out what VTT to use, and apparently Foundry is the uh, Foundry is the best can uh, best cantrip. Foundry is the best VTT for what I need, uh, because I need something incredibly moddable. So. That's that. Okay then. Uh bugga 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 bugga. I've been meaning to have to learn that It's just the fact that the there's one other thing I have to learn. Um Ideas, ideas, ideas. Hmm. I don't really want to do another defense because I've already got some reaction using cantrips. We don't want too many reaction using cantrips, especially because most people only get one reaction. Um, Bone Shield being an exceptional bass, because Bone Shield had, like, a very clear narrative, like, oh yeah, you want to do this behind it. Ooh, actually, no, no, we come up with our illusions. Damn. I was like, hmm, maybe I should look up, do some research, and then I'm like, hold on, I've already done illusions, I need mind control. Um, control. Well, it's not mind control, it's mind effects. What do we do? It's simple. It affects the mind. I did have the idea that you could maybe have a cantrip that's like pop this on someone for the next however long uh, the next time you would uh, 
What if you had a cantrip that made your knowledge your 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 in your whiz and your charisma appear to be zero? I'm just thinking, what if there was a spell that could make you to anything that's like, ooh, I want to go for someone who's really charismatic, or really wise, or really smart. It's like, okay. That could... You touch a willing target and for the next hour, the hour, for the next hour to outside observation, spell effects and psionic powers. You, the target, appears to have a knowledge. Intuition, determination is zero. That would be interesting. Because it's one of those cantrips that will, like, never come up. Except for the time it may be really useful. And it'd be interesting because there are certain spells. That like, oh yeah, if this thing has a knowledge higher than that, you get affected by it, and it's like, okay, but that spell, I just don't have that knowledge, so I can't be affected by it. That would be interesting. It'd be an interesting play, because it would potentially elude some of spell effects and psionic powers. And it could have some fun interplay with certain monsters. And, like, as far as your spell casting is concerned, as far as your ability to use skills and anything are concerned, mechanically, you are still your character sheet stats. It's just to external forces who are trying to check against the numerical value you are treated as being a zero Zero would be higher. It'd have to be lower than zero. Maybe we'd set it and treat it as minus three because all mechanical effects assume minus two. Okay, minus three. Yeah. I think that works. It's all right. Let me note this down. I'm not going to sit here and make you all watch me uh, actually type out spells. That's just boring for everybody. Um...
Okay, yep, that works, that works. And what we'll do is we'll put the mental shield in cosmic and psionic. We'll put... We'll put the... Graffiti. I think the graffiti and the firework can actually go in all three. I think all of them could do. I don't think psionics would get them, but I think the three spell groups would get them. Yeah, I think the three spell groups would get them, and the manipulation move you can go to. Definitely go to Cosmic. Definitely go to Psionic. It could go to all three, I think. I think all three, in theory, could do a forced move for an individual. So. Plus it gives all three of them a bit of control utility. Um. Which is, you know, something they could do with. And then there are three, four, three, three cantrips I need to come up with. One, two for cosmic, one for faith, and one for psychic. And it is a melee cantrip. Something to give the Either a buff to weapon, or an armed, or something. Something in the event that the class ever, by the class's choice, or through the half cast class's choice, chose to get into a melee fight, what spell would they have? They each need a melee spell. They've each got an AoE. They've each got a single target. They now just need a melee spell. And then I think we have everything covered. Cantrip wise. It then turns into the other spell levels. But to be fair, cantrip was what I needed fixed first. Because the thing about cantrip is, it's the spells that are A, most commonly used, because they don't require spell slots, and they're spells that immediately are useful for low-level character sessions. Um, I could just give the SRD spells to the characters for first level and go, okay, when the new spells are added, have fun. But the cantrips you kind of need right away because they're just a constant um, thing you got to pay attention to. So yes, um, the joy of spells. I'll briefly uh, go into what we have. Oh yeah, I've been working on the fighting style feats. Um... I've not finished yet, so we won't go into that too heavily. Um, Bard, the main thing to know that we've done since last time. Um, we've decided for first level, it's going to be Bardic Inspiration, Spellcasting, and Artist of Renown, which is basically, you are so renowned an artist, you will have a special effect. So it might be that you always know where to find information or you know how to get in with the upper upper crust of society or you know how to uh, play to a more downtrodden community. It's basically you are really good at this very specific social situation, you know, just what to do to help people, help the party. Bardic specialization at second level is some pre-prepared spells. Um, and then you get your mastery. Bardic College 
is bardic knowledge. Feet at fourth. Bardic knowledge and quick thinking at fifth. Bardic knowledge is replacing jack of all trades. It's still jack of all trades, but it has an extra bit in that it has some play with the search action. And more importantly, it, it, it kind of acts as a lesser legend law to allow the bard just early game to kind of be like the, oh yeah, I know a story about that. Um, and quick thinking is some improvements to your uh, bardic inspiration. You then have more bardic college, you then have reliable inspiration, which is more improvements to inspiration. Feed to magical secrets, which is what we know, expand about a college. And from there, it gets a bit more difficult because we haven't actually worked out the latter half. Um, improved specialization is probably going to be uh, that for your specialization, you've got some spells. What it will probably be is you get some stuff you can do during short rests. To do your specialization. Um, we're probably going to have somewhere in the higher levels. Letting you get some more artist of renown stuff. Or improving your current artist of renown choices. One thing I had considered doing. Though we haven't gone ahead with it. Was trying to come up with a. Is it possible to let you play a bard that isn't a spellcaster? Um, the current answer is no. Um, as uninteresting as that sounds to kind of cut away an option. I tried making a uh, magicless bard work. Uh, the main problem comes... We've... I'd have to come up with something as powerful as spellcasting, which is already difficult because spellcasting is pretty powerful. Um, and you already have bardic knowledge as a standard thing. I could make it that, for example, you could either have it that magical secrets let you cast the spell once for free and if you had spell slots, you would know how to cast the spell. That way, it would still give something interesting to the magicless bard, but it wouldn't be um, as powerful as it would in a normal bard's hand. You... I might need to change the word against your magical secrets now I think about it. Um, the other thing is your specialization would have to change to not give you a spell list uh, which is possible it is entirely possible um, actually, isn't maybe a no magic bard isn't impossible? It's just very difficult. The problem is if you make a non magical bard, what is the difference between them? You have to give them something. I can move the short rest up to second level because second level is now very empty. Now we've taken the uh, artisan to first. So second level, we could give a rest to each ability and go, listen, you get the rest effect and you get the spells and you get the spell things if you took spell casting. Uh, 
we could then give Oh, I don't know, maybe a planning thing or an inspiring leader ability. Maybe specs to use as a bardic inspiration. Sorry, I'm now just going down the rabbit hole of is a no magic bard actually possible? No, it's mm, possible. Give me a second. I'm just doing some mental gymnastics. So what you do is you, like spellcasting, we give you the choice of which of the three mental stats to use. What we narratively, because we've tied the class so much to magic, is you have instead of learning to cast traditional spells, is you have instead... You have instead learned to channel magic into little ways of being more inspiring. And we give you some features, a bit like Eldritch Invocation. that you can take instead of spells. You can use as you can pick as many as you can cantrips on the cantrips table. Uh, where's Bard? Where's the Bard table? Yeah, you could pick as many as you would know cantrips. Yes, you pick as many as you know cantrips. I'm trying to find ways to make redundancy in what I've currently done. So you give a non-spell casting effect. You get so many features that you can choose. You can choose as many as... The number of these things you know is the same as the cantrips known in the cantrips known section of the table. So you're not casting spells, you're instead doing this other thing. Because we've brought the rest forward to level 2, that is still useful. You just specify you do not know the spells, because the spells are only if you take the spell casting feature then you as for the improvements later on what we would do is merely improve how you would utilize the rest we can focus more on artist of renown instead of your specialization for what gets upgraded as you level magical secrets as i said we slightly change the wording of i think that that all works just terrifying because i'm not uh, 
what spurred this conversation was everyone going like, oh, why is Chris, um, why is Chris Pine's character a bard when he never uses magic? And it's like, well, if... and then someone went, oh, well, obviously we need to make a bard that doesn't use magic. And I was like, oh, that feels rather, um, silly. Because Bard seems super into magic, and then the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, mm. are they though? Because what it occurs. Is if you have a subclass that requires magic. The only subclass that I think really ever ties in with magic. Is the. The only one that ever ties into magic is lore. Who only ties into magic because they have magical secrets. Which therefore means that we could pull back on that string. So if we're pulling down where this thread leads, it is entirely possible to make a bar that doesn't use magic. Which would make it one of the only full casters. That has spell casting as an optional feature. Because that was going to be a feature of half caster. Every half caster has three features to choose from. At the level they would get spell casting. One of them is spell casting. The other two are similarly iconic things. I like this, this works. So, um, what I was going to discuss was um, F14 classes working out where they would go. Uh, that's going to be the most important thing is who goes what goes where. So, uh, can I get F14? Classes and jobs. So, in the tank, we have Paladin. Now, Paladin is going to end up being Paladin. It's very. Yeah. Warrior. I think that could either go into the warrior class or into the battle channeler class, depending on whether or not they want to play with the rage. The only thing I'm going to have to make sure for both paladin and warrior is like with battle channeler, they get an option that lets them tank better. Let's them have that tank uh feeling dark knight is entirely battle channel that's what it was designed to be gunbreaker will probably be fighter and the reason for that is i could entirely make an invent attack and i'm not ruling that off the table but but I think the special ammunition mechanic 
will lend itself most to a fighter. The other suggestion was you make them a paladin subclass, which is entirely possible, but I think with what we've got as an intent for the fighter class redesign, I think Gunbreaker will fit that more with the here's your opener, here's your middle moves, here's your effect, here's this effect, here's that effect, here's your finishing move. I think that will flow better from a... I think that will jive rather well with a Gunbreaker. So I think Gunbreaker is going to become a fighter subclass. White Mage is a life domain cleric. Or a very healer focused druid. Does druid actually have any healer dedicated? Does does uh... Does Druid have any good healers? Um, technically you have this one because you have Balm of the Summer Court, which is Balm of the Summer Court is the greatest thing ever. However, the rest of this does not lend itself to being a healer. Uh, Circle of Spores. Circle of Spores isn't a healer, I don't think. It's like necromancy. Yeah, it's like the tank option. Stars has Guiding Bolt. I think it's more support than healer. Uh, you do have Chalice. And... Moon is definitely not Shepherd. No, Shepherd's more about summony, summony stuff, and wildfire is destruction. So yeah, Drew, uh, we'd have to make a Druid subclass. Admittedly, not impossible. Let me know this down, because otherwise I'm never going to... Nope, 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 nope. That... Fighter! Yep. Gunbreaker subclass. Um, yeah, I think White Mage would go here. I think... Scholar would be a... Restoration Wizard. I do need to come back to this. Um, yeah, I think there'd be a Restoration Wizard. Astrologian. Um, the problem of Astrologian is the easiest would be, say, a divination wizard. But then you don't get any healing spells.
like you have some wonderful stuff to mimic the deck but you don't have anything that does healing though they could we do let you take multiple subclasses they could double dip they could go i'm going to spend some of my wizard subclasses on restoration and some on divination the problem then is you don't get even though mm, hmm let's have a look specialized studies uh, divination. When cast a spell at the divination school, if there's a chance they'll provide inaccurate information. <sighs> that. If it wasn't for that, I would say, oh god, just pick divination, uh, pick restoration, because then you get. I guess you could just. Restore number of targets HP. What is skill bonus in addition to the normal effect? Spell targets multiple targets. They each benefit this effect. Okay, so you could go divination school, and then yeah, you could just go straight down the divination school. Get all the divination effects, and just try to get some healing spells. Um, cosmic magic would allow for that. Well, no, specifically the arcanist and how they interact with cosmic magic would allow for that. So, yeah, astrologian is probably a divination arcanist, taking an astrolobe as their school specific item. Uh... It's, it's a bit dodgy, but I think that's the best. Oh, no, I don't want weight measurements. I want this. Uh, then is Sage. That's Inventor. That is just an Inventor. Sage is Inventor. Sage's inventor. Then we have Malay DPS, so we have Monk. Monk is the martial artist. Dragoon is fight. Huh. I have to ask a question uh, briefly. So I had a thought that, oh, yeah, it's nice, it's easy. Uh, Dragoon is just a fighter, but they have aura effects. They might be a fucking paladin. A, pa a, dra a Dragoon might be a paladin subclass.
Oh. Hmm. Let's see, this is where we get into the weird stuff. So. Samurai, I would probably say. Take the uh, Samurai subclass for the fighter currently and just apply it to fighter. Actually, yeah. is that sensible? Where's the, where's the tab? I, I would probably just tell my player, go get the Samurai subclass and use that. I don't need to make up a Samurai. There is already a Samurai that exists. I don't need to make one to make FF14 work. Um... Give yourself a bunch of weapon attack rolls. Uh. Yeah, I think. I think I I think um a fighter a samurai suits the samurai I think it does I think it does um I would probably have to custom make for the player some special move options, but I think that would, that would do it. Reaper is a Slayer subclass. Reaper is just a Slayer subclass. It's just a Slayer subclass. Slay, 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 slay. Ninja. Ninja is complicated. So, there are a number of parts to being a ninja. In FF14. There is Mudra, and there is your Marshal, and there is your, like, your regular 1-2-3 combo with all the extra buttons that come with them. 1, 2, 3 combo, nice and simple, I would just go it and the rogue, you know, th because the thing is, ninja comes from the rogue job. Um, I would say it, they, but they're both going into specialist. Um... Which is kind of fair, but if I wanted to make a ninja subclass, uh, it's like the specialist meets the martial artist. I, I'm not sure. I need to... I don't know, honestly. I do not know where Ninja would go. I really don't know where Ninja goes. Um, they they can be a martial artist or a ninja, or a bra 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 rogue. Sorry. Um, for the base classes that go into them, I should probably say, uh, Sword and Shield, Warrior, uh, sorry, Sword and Shield, Gladiator, could be Paladin, or Fighter, but that doesn't require anything really special subclassy wise Marauder came, uh, Marauder goes into Warrior, they're basically the same. Dark Knight has nothing before it, Gunbreaker has nothing before it. Uh, Condra goes to White Mage, but they are so similar. 
a basic Harkonist goes into both Scholar and Summoner, and as the name would suggest, probably best you go Harkonist. Uh, Astrologian has no pre, Sage has no pre. Uh, the Spear Fighter would probably go straight to Warrior. That that's that is a Warrior's uh, one, but that that like Gladiator doesn't need a subclass because. All it is is you are a fighter who has taken, like, a feat to make you better at pole arms. Uh, Pudalist into Monk is very much the same. They'd both be the martial artist. Rogue into Ninja. So Rogue does have some differences from Ninja because Ninja adds the entire Mudra element. which makes things complicated. Uh, the other offender for the base class not being like the main class is Archer into Bard. Now, how we're going to make this work is the Bard is going into Bard. Um, but the Bard subclass is specifically about the music, the songs that come from the Bard class. It's very much focused on the Bard, not the archery section. You would probably, if you wanted to focus Archer, go Fighter with... There's an Archer subclass in Fighter, if I recall. In one of the books, I don't pay too much attention to Fighter, but there's an Archer subclass in there somewhere. Um, Machinist is just an inventor. Or a Fighter with a gun. Dancer is a specialist or a bard. Uh, how we are currently going to make it work is... I think for those three, I kind of have to pick a key one to be the embodiment of the F14 class. And then I go, okay, but you can be this other alternate option. I think Dancer is getting a bard subclass. In the same way that FF14 Bards are getting a Bard subclass, they both are getting their You Support X. So with Dancer, you'll get Dance Partner and the ability to use your dancers to buff the party. And you'll have the ability with Bard to buff the party through song. There will be, obviously, you can take a bow with an archer, and you can take a... You can focus on performance for the specialist, at which point you can be a dancer. But those are very much a... A dancer that takes... Um, the specialist is basically I, I am here for the damage Where, uh, whereas the, the dancer for bard is actually trying to give you support um, and you know the actual physical range DPS in FF14 with the exception of machinist aren't actually focused that the damage is the thing, everyone's damage is the thing, but the damage isn't their biggest thing. They also have this support attack. Machinists are slightly different. They do have... Um, I think, actually, yeah, I think they would go into Inventor. So I better make sure Machinist is... Inventor Machinist. Where are you? Where are you? Inventor. Oh. And you have magical. So Blue Mage is already in the Psionic. Summoner takes the Ord, uh, takes Conjuration uh, Arcanist. Black Mage is probably Evocation. Arcanist. 
as dull as it sounds, me just going, everyone's an arcanist. It's like, yeah, but at the same time, they are kind of the best for the thing. Um... Because the thing is, I could make a... The, the Summoner is perfectly suited for um, Arcanist. The problem with Black Mage is the only way I could make something more Black Mage is if I went into the entire Fire Ice duality. I don't think that would gel well with the Arcanist class. You could maybe get away with it with Druid. But Black Mage doesn't really scream Druid. It screams Arcane. You could go with Sorcerer, but Sorcerer is about the changing of the body to better reflect the soul, which is not really what Black Magic is about. Or you could go Warlock, but... Warlock doesn't really have a patron, and I can't come up really with a patron that would make sense to this fire and ice duality. This is the problem. It's the fire and ice duality that... You need a class to make sense for that duality to occur. And the other problem is Black Mage is a full caster, and none of the full casters make sense to have this duality. Um, technically, Warlock isn't truly a full caster. It never gets up to um, top-level magic. So it probably is Arcanist uh, evocation, and the recommendation will probably just be just take a load of Fire and Ice spells and just be happy with that. Um... Red Mage is the final one. Now, Red Mage is a spellcaster who charges into battle. So, I believe that I can make something for them in the Lawmaster class, which is a new class we're going to be making that is based around being a half-caster for the wizard. Now the thing about the lore master is I think it could work because you want to kind of have that. Paladin is I'm the martial caster who's all, you know, big, clanky. Uh, I take all the hits, I stand still. Ranger is very much quick. You're dashing, you're either shooting from afar or you're going in with two blades uh, you're trying to aragon it law master i think would suit red mage very well it's like i'm casting okay here we go we're going into melee there, there's kind of more of a system to it and for that one i could maybe have a bit more of this theme actually no that would actually really work the theme uh, what we have is a theme of entropy versus uh, not entropy. Um, I, I try and refine the theme a bit. But basically then, yeah, you could have a red mage. The alternative, if you didn't want to do it that way, is I would probably just say go bard. Go bard, make sure you take spell casting and go college of sword. So you cast your spells when you're far away, and when they're up close, you go stab, stab, rape you. Um, I think those would be the recommended things, which actually is interesting because what it basically means is there's no warlock. There's no sorcerer. There is no 
Really, there's no recommended specialist. Yeah, it would be interesting. Um, well, I'm just trying to find... Just trying to see if anyone has responded to my... Uh, Hello, it's this. Oh, don't care about that. Okay, so that's currently quiet. Um, yeah. Ninja is the bugbear. I, I don't know what to do with Ninja. Okay. Uh, I will briefly pull up the Ninja's uh, skill roster. Hold on, let me just new tab. Paste go. Ninja. So you have your you have your three basic maneuvers. Hide. Throw dagger. Mug, trick attack, and then we hit here. Then we hit the ninja. Ninja, I have no actual clue how we're going to do this. You very poignantly get spells. So part of me wonders, would this be our rogue spellcaster? Would, would this be the rogue who has levels in being a spellcaster? Actually, yeah, I think it would be rogue. Because spell casts. Yeah, because. So describe where my head's at. Martial art is the way I want it to work, is it's very. Um... It's, it's all about the chain. This dice goes into this dice, which 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 goes into this dice, etc., etc., etc. Whereas Ninja was a lot more. You do this, this, this to get this. You do this, this, this to get this. You do this, this, this to get this. Which admittedly is very warrior. I think we are going to try and put them in specialist. They just might be a spellcaster. Be interesting. I mean, if I think about it, no, wrong thing. I'm looking for monk. So we're going down a similar path to the way of the Shadow Monk. Why right, what check is your evocation transmutation?
Evocation Transmutation. Evocation Transmutation, Illusion, and maybe Mental Attacks? Have to have a look. But then if you take so if we gave you the cosmic list, but with the specifics of it has to be evocation, transmutation, illusion, maybe dictation. I'd have to see where we end up. And you're all low level spell aren't you? Second, 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 second. Because we'll be going down a similar train to Here's where we go by which is spell slots. Yeah, it goes up to fourth. So Okay. So yeah, Ninja might be a spellcasting specialist. With its specific skill being stealth. So it is kind of back to basics rogue, you know. You're not picking any other skills, you're picking stealth. So it will be a proper sneak attack. So what class is? Uh, so if they want to do white mage, they'll be a druid. Warrior, if they want to be a samurai or a... Uh, warrior, if they want to be, maybe a warrior, uh, definitely a samurai. That's it. Specialist, if they want to be a ninja, no soul shaped slayer, if they want to be a reaper, no realm walkers. Scion, if they want to be a blue man. No Pact Bound, Oath Sworn if they want to be a Paladin, potentially also a Dragoon. A uh, Martial Artist if they want to be a Monk, a Lawmaster if they want to be a Red Mage, Inventor if they want to be a Machinist or a Sage. Uh, bard if they want to be a Dancer or a Bard. Battle Channel if they want to be a Dark Knight or a... Oh shit, that's it, thing. That's the other thing. Oh, did I already put it? Oh, I did. Gunbreaker. Um, yeah, Gunbreaker. Uh, Battle Channeler for Warrior and Dark Knight Arcanist for Black Mage Astrologian Summoner Scholar And that's that We have, I believe, successfully pinned down which classes um which classes will probably be needing a priority on being written the good news is 
obviously a lot of them need Arcanist, who has been written. Uh, two of them use Battle Channel, which has been written. Hopefully no one says Inventor. Because if no one says Inventor, I don't have to fucking worry about the crafting system. Well, I probably still need to worry about the crafting system, because Disciple Land have had to exist. Um... The problem is none of these now really turn into a kill multiple birds with one stone once we've completed Bard. And we still have the problem that um, I still have to finish the spell system. We have to do the crafting system. I have to come up with a companion system, especially because... A summoner don't exist. And the thing is, I've kind of made this like, oh yeah, for being an FF14 class, this is probably what you should use. But then a lot of people are like, yeah, but I want to be this other class. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, so I'm actually, I think, going to call it here, primarily because we have done something very important, which is uh, work out what the fuck am I doing? Um, and it's given me, like, focus to suddenly go, hold on, this is what you actually need to do. Um, so what I will probably actually do is next week... Uh, give me just a second. Um, this weekend's a bit temperamental. Um, I will probably try and stream some games tomorrow. We won't do games design. Um, what I'm probably going to try and do is stream next week, actually, some work on um, Surviving Winter. We've had a break from it, so hopefully I can get my brain back into gear and we work on that. It'll also give me a chance to have a break from this and not think about this game. Um, actually, before we finish, before we finish, before we finish, what I will do is I'll give a treat. I'm going to give you the pitch document for this game. So obviously, as I said, there's some campaign prep. We obviously need to make some classes. We need to make some subclasses. Um... So, <clears throat> the pitch for this campaign is this. It is five years since the Battle of Carton overall ruined to Eorzea. The Grand Companies have grown distant from each other. Ishgard closed its borders, caught in an endless war with the Dravanian Horde. Charlian has fled the continent, leaving its colony abandoned. And now they refuse to converse with the people of Eorzea. The Garlian Empire amasses its forces on the border past Belsar's Wall rebuilding their numbers lost five years ago, to potentially launch a second invasion of the continent. All the while the uh, cries of resistance are whispered quietly amongst the lo locals. The tribes have begun to summon primals in response to threats from both the rising Garlean threat and the broken promises of the city-states. It is the seventh Umbral era. The world is on the brink and the people of Eorzea long for lost heroes, the warriors of light but hope still remains. In Dravania, goblins and man have worked together to build a city of Idleshire. From the ruins of the Charlian colony of Old Charlian, there is an academy has been built. Uh, here an academy has been built. Organised and run by the Adventurers Guild to help teach aspiring adventurers the skill they need to survive and thrive in this time of darkness. All are welcome if they desire to learn with houses and lodging assigned to those sponsored by the Grand Companies and other interested parties. 
who hope to gain the allegiance of young and upcoming adventurers who in this time of crisis may be more important than ever. That is where you come in. The threads of fate have led to you being given the opportunity to attend the initial assessments for the Eorzean Academy. Some of you may have sponsors from your home city-state, a specific individual or an organisation. The sponsor will have arranged for you to attend and will look after your lodging and basic supplies. Others may have no sponsor, hoping to impress one of the onlookers during your trials. No matter what you, your adventure has just begun, and only the spinner knows what fate may have in store for you. The adventure is based off the Strixhaven book, though not using a direct plot, so there is no risk of spoiling it if you are currently playing the Strixhaven game. We will be using a modified version of D&D 5e. Please ask the DM any questions about modifications. Uh, do not create concrete details of modifications being used. The world is that of the MMO Final Fantasy XIV, and there are some alterations to accommodate for the game and the D&D elements. However, largely it will try to fit in the world of the game. The adventure starts in the first academic year, taking place five years after the Battle of Cartano, the start of the Realm Reborn. The adventure will consist of multiple sessions, making up an academic year with currently four years planned in total. Each session will be held online, uh, using a VTT. Okay, that's that. I should probably, because they are not connected, do that. And yes, so this is what I'm currently running, and what now my game's design is all going towards. Uh, what we have done so far is currently I need to write up a document for the faith in the 12 because that has things that happened. Academic progress is my own notes. Uh, sponsor backgrounds. So I'll briefly go into that actually because that is something I have made more concrete. So in these core rules here, I listed something called national backgrounds. Um, so how national backgrounds are going to work in this is each sponsor has a background and they're tied to one of the city states that you meet in ff14 um, you get an expanded spell list uh, as per the strixhaven houses you get an expanded spell list which i have themed to be appropriate to each of the city states um and I have um each city state has expanded equipment over what you get in your starting equipment. They have two skills that are listed that you can choose instead of the skills tied to your background. And I believe they come with some training that goes on top of your basic training that you choose for your background. Yeah, so I have been a little bit busy, so that's that. Um, I can go into a bit more detail if folks like to in a future session. So. Give me just one moment. I would like to thank everyone for coming and everyone for joining. And for those watching the VOD, we will see you all next time.